I was in your shoes. I was almost 200 pounds at age 13 and I was struggling. I didn't know where to start. There were so many different diets out there, different recipes, and I was so overwhelmed that I had a constant yo-yo of losing the weight and gaining it right back. Over the last eight years on my fitness journey, there are some key habits and things that I have done and implemented that I wish I knew when I started my fitness journey to help me lose weight, balance my hormones, focus on my gut health, and get long-term sustainable results when it comes to my goals. Today, we are gonna be busting some fat loss mistakes that you probably believe, and I did for a long time. And by making these changes, busting these myths, I've been able to lose over 50 pounds, stay lean year round, balance my hormones, and I eat over 2,600 calories a day for maintenance because I found the balance in my life. The first fat loss myth that we're gonna debunk is low carb diets because there's so many diet trends out there right now with keto, carnivore, and I'm not gonna say I haven't, I've done them all. I went towards low carb and carnivore diets specifically to heal my gut from SIBO, H. pylori, and when I first started my journey, I thought I had to cut carbs because carbs would be that contributing factor to help me stay lean. And this is the truth. With low carb diets, while you may see short term results in terms of weight loss, it may not be long term and it could be the reason that you're yo-yoing back and forth between your weight and different diets. The truth is, you can lose weight on any diet, but it's about finding that balance and what the perfect diet is for you that you can make a lifestyle. I want to break down a little something about carbohydrates and the role in fat loss. So, short and simple, for every one gram of carb, your body holds on to three to six grams of water. When you initially cut carbohydrates low into your diet, you may feel a lot leaner. You may see that scale go down a few pounds that first week, but is it water weight or is it true fat loss? And if it's true fat loss, are you gonna be able to sustain having minimal carbs for a long time? Carbs play a major role in your body in terms of recovery, your cortisol levels. Um, they also help with sleep, digestion. And when I was doing these low carb diets, I noticed that once I hit under, I would say 100 grams of carbs, I started getting more anxiety my cortisol went up. When my cortisol went up, I wasn't sleeping good. I didn't feel like I was recovering the gym. I didn't have the power and the strength in the gym to lift what I was. And I just felt like I was essentially getting weaker with more anxiety, retaining water, and just, I didn't feel my best self. With my clients and with me, I have a baseline of carbohydrates personally that I don't go under. And based off of what my goals are, and how my trading and everything is and my calories, I adjust from there. And I even have clients that are in menopause and everything and we increase their food and through changing our training and looking at lifestyle changes, we're able to get them eating more food, feeling stronger and losing weight. So the first myth we're debunking is low carb diets I just, I feel like you need to find a balance of everything. I'm going to put a video up here that I did fully breaking down the complete science of how carbohydrates help and can help you meet your goals in terms of long-term results with fat loss. Second myth that I want to debunk is going to be three to four meals a day versus five to six meals a day for fat loss. So I heard it too. Going into my fat loss journey, I heard, you know, have a meal every two to three hours, make a small snack. This is gonna help boost your metabolism, stabilize your blood sugar levels. And what I found was I actually feel better and get more results doing the opposite. So currently I eat around three to four meals a day. I did a whole video on the benefits of three to four meals versus five to six meals a day for fat loss. And I'm gonna put it here, but I wanna share some key things that I have personally learned from shifting over and how it has helped me. Number one, planning out five to six meals a day, having them prepped in your fridge and having time to sit down with your meal and be present. I'm sorry, I'm busy, my clients are busy. We got work, you may have school, you may have kids. 
I don't have time for that. When I had less meals a day, I was able to sit down, be present with my meals, I have better digestion, I'm less stressed out, and it's more sustainable for me. I don't feel like I have to plan out all these recipes. It's, it's simple. And if it's gonna be simple for you to do, then it's gonna be sustainable. And the same thing with your results. If your results are something that you can see yourself doing six months, two, three years from now, then your results are gonna be there. So I switched over, number one, because it has helped me just easier with my lifestyle, eating less meals. It's helped with my digestion because, you know, having the time in between your meals allows for your MMC pathway to come on, which clears out the bad bacteria in the gut. It has also helped me a few other ways um, that I'm going to mention now. It helped me with cravings. Um, having that time in between, again, affects the gut microbiome, so it helped me tremendously get rid of cravings. And also, it's helped me stabilize my blood sugar levels because I'm able to keep my insulin levels throughout the day lower. So I go more towards that three to four meals a day versus that five to six. I sit down, I'm present with my meals, I'm grateful for my meals, and that has truly been game changer for me. But if you haven't checked out that video, it is very educational and I go full into detail about all of the um, pros and cons of both. And I'll put it again up here for you guys. The next fat loss myth that I want to debunk is going to be on intermittent fasting. So there are so many benefits when it comes to intermittent fasting. And I started my intermittent fasting journey, not just for weight loss, but also for the gut healing benefits of it. And I did feel a difference, but when you're going for fasting just for the fat loss, I want you to remember this, okay? So a lot of clients come to me and they're eating like one to two meals a day. If you are doing this 18 hour fasting and you're only having one or two meals a day, you're gonna be eating a lot less food in that day, so your calories are gonna be less because your eating window is less. You know, you can't eat two, 3,000 calories in one meal. So less time to eat, you're eating less food, your metabolism starts slowing down because you're eating the less food, and then when you stop intermittent fasting, you have a lot of cravings and you have more of an urge to overeat, or you may be doing intermittent fasting all the time, and you're like, in the beginning, I saw so many results, and now I don't see the same results anymore. So personally, with me and my clients, I like to find that happy place, okay? Right now, I'm doing 12 to 14 hours and I'm focusing on my three meals. This has allowed me, the next fitness myth that I wanna debunk, I see so many people do this, I did it too, and this comes down to something that I call cardio strength training. So when I first started my weight loss journey, I thought two things, I need to be on a caloric deficit, and I need to be doing tons of cardio, full-blown sweat sessions, not leaving that gym till I was just drenched and sore. And what I find was I was almost having, with my strength training, 30-second rest periods, trying to throw in all these supersets, metabolic conditionings, so that I would just leave the gym drenched. And then on top of that, I would think, okay, now I need to go on the Stairmaster and do HIIT training. There is something called doing too much. When it comes to your cardio, it's about finding that perfect balance of both. The way to really get long-term sustainable results with fat loss is to build your metabolism. This is through prioritizing progressive overload and strength training. I tell my clients, I want you know one and a half to two minutes for our rest periods. I want us focusing on the last two to three reps, challenging with good form. It's not about supersetting everything, getting your heart rate through the roof. It's not about burning so many calories in that moment. It's about building our lean muscle mass. Over time, that's gonna help boost your metabolism. The more muscle, the less fat, the higher our metabolism. Especially for my females over 40, if you're doing tons of cardio, you're doing a lot of fasting, you're on low calories, and then you're strength training, you're doing these 30 second rest periods and trying to get your, your heart rate up and burn all these calories, 
It may take you in the opposite direction where you're lacking motivation, you're feeling bloated, run down, tired, not sleeping good, and your hormones are all miscombobulated. Yeah, I said miscombobulated, I'm throwing that out there. So instead of looking at your strength training, your cardio, as I need to burn so many calories in a session, look at the long-term results. I like to paint the picture and customize everything to my clients so that they're able to work smarter, not harder. So the biggest tip I would say is with your strength training, prioritize that over your cardio and really focus on that progressive overload with those solid rest periods so you're able to build more muscle, boost the metabolism, less fat versus just burning more calories in that moment. The next fat loss myth that I want to hit is going to be fat loss, you should be losing two, three pounds a week. And this is the truth. Like anything in life, nothing is linear. And even fat loss is not linear. As we talk about, when you go into fat loss, you're lowering your calories, you're increasing your cardio. The longer you're on fat loss, your body starts to adapt. So what happens is with me and my clients, in order to get myself long-term results, I like to implement diet breaks, refeeds to help replenish my leptin and ghrelin, which is your hunger and satiety hormones, as well as your thyroid that runs your metabolism as well. So when it comes to fat loss, it's not about how fast can I get to my goal, let me cut my calories, add in a ton of cardio, because your metabolism is going to adapt. But it's about doing it in a smart way so that I like to say, I want I tell my clients this, I'm like, I want you to be eating the most amount of food, doing the least amount of cardio, and still losing weight. So that's why I take things slowly, but never, never underestimate doing diet breaks, refeeds, and taking time off from dieting. Yes, it may take you longer to reach your goal, but by implementing these refeeds, these diet breaks, it's going to allow you better diet adherence. It's gonna make it more easy for you to go out with people, socialize. You're not gonna be having all these cravings. You're gonna have that strength in the gym to lift because there's periods where you're increasing your carbs and that helps with your lifting. So then you're gonna have keep more muscle on you, higher metabolism, and it's gonna be more sustainable. So that myth that we're talking about is don't think that fat loss is linear. It's not cut calories and then I'm just gonna go and hit my goal. It's know that there's periods where you may hit a plateau, but utilizing things like diet breaks and carb refeeds and all of that are great tools to replenish everything to keep you from overcoming those plateaus. And they're great ways to get you to your goal long-term, even though it may take a little longer, it's gonna be more sustainable. The truth is, when it comes to fat loss, it's not about going to the gym and spending hours a day in the gym. It's not about what is the perfect diet for you because anyone can cut their calories, add in tons of cardio, and they're going to reach their goal. But do you see yourself on low calories, doing tons of cardio, stressed out, overwhelmed the rest of your life? No. Especially for my females over the age of 40 going through menopause, you're losing muscle at a faster rate. We need to focus on our gut, our hormones, doing things and optimizing our training so that you're able to train smarter, not harder. Less time in the gym, training at home is even fine, but just doing it in a way to optimize your results. The next, I am looking for three to five females over the age of 40 looking to transform their body in the next 90 days. I'm gonna be helping you guys with everything in terms of optimizing our training so we're able to build muscle, lose fat, make healthy food swaps going towards our gut, our hormones, and bridge the gaps to get you long-term sustainable results. If this sounds like you, I will put more information below, but I truly, truly just wanna take the guesswork out of it for you. I truly believe that everything that I went through with my fitness journey, overweight, underweight, um, marathon running, the gut issues, the hormone imbalances, has allowed me to help so many people, and it's truly a passion of mine. And if you're wanting to get started but not ready to work with me yet, 
I also have a full 12 week dumbbell only challenge where you could build muscle, lose fat from the comfort of your own home with just dumbbells. So I will put again, more information on that below for you. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below, but I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you next Sunday.